a sports card podcast where we tackle the hobby's hottest topics in depth to help you navigate the sports card landscape and enjoy the hobby we all love. Here's your host, John Newman. Welcome to another edition of Hobby Quick Hits. Thanks for jumping in and downloading or listening to the show. But this show is made possible by our great sponsor, Mojo Breaks. So before we get this episode started, let's take a quick minute to hear from them. We'll be right back and start the show. Hey folks, wanted to tell you about the best place to get some of your sealed sports card wax products. Great selection and some of the lowest prices on the web. MojoBreakShop.com is that place. Whether it's a box or a whole case, they're your guys. And they ship around the world right to your door. The Mojo Break name is one of the most trusted in the hobby. From sports cards to Pokemon, their selection can't be beat. They offer daily deals and pre-orders. Who won first place at this year's Tops Rip Party? None other than Mojo Break. Their prices are already great, but here's a way to save even more money. Use the code QUICKHITS, that's Q-U-I-C-K-H-I-T-S, for 10% off anything on mojobreakshop.com. They also have a full-service card shop in Santa Clara, California. So if you're in the area, stop by. They're open seven days a week, so check them out at mojobreakshop.com. All right, as I typically sometimes do with Hobby Quick Hits, because it's a shorter 10 to 20 minute show, I'll record two, three, sometimes even four episodes in a night. And, uh, you know, just whatever's on my mind or whatever's current going on. And this is not the first time it's happened, but the episode you're hearing right now today was not what I was uh, preparing to release uh, so what you're hearing today is something I, I recorded uh, real current, and it, it, I'm, I'm pushing this out there rather than the original one because I think it's sort of really trending, current, uh, and very important. So the title of this episode is The Sports Card Market Crashing Question Mark. That is the question. I will say this, uh, definitely different now than it was. I mean, that's a a no-brainer. We are seeing lower prices, uh, significant. And if you base it on the percentages uh, of what's considered a crash, then yes, we are in a sports market crash. Definitely a, a extreme correction. I mean, a lot of this, we're arguing over terminology. Uh, it's, it, it really doesn't matter what we call it, right? A correction, a crash. I think with crash, the sounds of it scare people, like it's the end. You know, when you crash, it, you, you don't recover, let's say, or it's terrible, or all your cards are worthless, and it's like the depression, you know, when we think about stock market crash and, and all that. So the, the connotation people... Are I think fearful of, and sometimes more fearful of the word or, and the connotation than the than what's actually happening itself. And for sure, cards have went down, waxes went down. Um, you know, uh, we're not in the same stratosphere as we were even three, four months ago, a year ago, and so on during the, what we'll call the boom period. And for for people who are maybe in in this uh, market to make a quick flip or quick buck, this really hits home uh, for them. And I I suspect many may exit the same way they came in, kind of quickly. You know, some people will like that. Some people like me will sort of be in the middle, right? I mean, every each to each their own, but I think for this hobby to, to thrive and survive, we need people transacting in it, in it. So I'm very hesitant to celebrate a bunch of people leaving, especially all at one time. It, it, it sometimes happens uh, in these cases. So I'm not 
screaming from the rooftops, goodbye, good riddance, or anything like that. And some others, you know, even if you're not a quick flipper as they're they're known, even if you're someone uh, like myself that's been in this industry, if you will, a long time, 30 plus years, um, you know, you don't really like seeing the value of your portfolio, the value of your collection uh, decline. Uh, even people who, you know, we, we hear the term true collector thrown around. I don't, you know, true collector meaning I don't sell my cards. I buy my cards. I keep them. Maybe I trade them, but I don't sell them. And it's more like a badge of honor and to each their own. You've heard me say that, hobby your way, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I, I, I guess it rubs me a wrong way sometimes when these true collectors sort of frown upon people who sell their cards and my my easy response to that is where did you get your cards did like the stork bring them were they just on your doorstep from an anonymous donor um did you rob somebody like you had to buy your cards whether it was uh, in box form complete set from whether it's walmart or joe's card shop in your neighborhood you bought it from somebody selling cards. And so that's great that you don't want to sell yours uh, or you don't transact on that level, uh, but we got to stop being derogatory or, or condescending to those that do, uh, like myself. And I'd say that even if I wasn't a seller. Believe me, this is not me being upset about that because I sell cards. I, I just think... It's a little disingenuous on that side of the aisle to, to sort of talk down or look upon negatively to people who sell cards, sports cards or, or trading cards. And uh, you don't want to? That's great. I don't, I don't knock you for not selling your cards. Uh, and, and that's the way it, it, shouldn't, it should be. But we're getting back onto the track here with what we're in right now. I think the wording of it is almost inconsequential right the, the wording has no effect on the percentage drops we're seeing right 30 40 in some cases 50 percent precipitous right you know guys that wear suit and ties that like to throw lingo around might take more heed into the the percentage drop people who work in the financial industry uh, on on an everyday basis might be more into the the lingo and i understand it has a place uh, but call it what you will, you know, a crash is in itself a correction, too. It's just a very large one. And so we may be in a crash, very large collection. I know uh, my friend Mike Moynihan, baseball collector uh, on YouTube, whose fingers on the pulse of this, especially on the vintage side. I was just on a, a, his show, might already be out or, or soon to be. And I didn't, you know, I knew what was going on in the, the modern end of the pool. And until talking to him and he pulled up a graph and a chart, I didn't realize it was even getting into the vintage and the things that some of these drops are happening uh, on significant cards uh, over there. And he pulled, he was very transparent. He pulled up uh, a chart of, of some of his key cards in his collection, which, by the way, is tremendous. And, uh, very forthcoming. I said, look, John, look, here's some of my, you know, 10, 11 top cards, uh, my, you know, probably most valuable cards. And here's where they were at this stage and at this calendar point. And here's where they are today. And here's the percentage uh, decrease. And uh, if you know anything about Mike, he doesn't collect cards for those values or for those monetary purposes. But like anyone else, right, we like to know what our cards are worth, right? When we open a pack and hit something nice, right? What, Honestly, uh, after maybe putting it in a, a top loader, semi-rigid, soft sleeve, uh, snap tight, right? What's one of the first things we do, right? Go and check the comps. What, did I, what is this thing worth, right? Admit it. I don't care if you don't sell your cards. I don't care if you're one of those people who say, I don't, I'm not in this. For financial reasons, I'd collect cards if they were worth nothing, yada, 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 get all that. But what's the first thing those folks do too, right? Go to eBay, check cops, other analytical, uh, you know, uh, 
price market tools, right? Uh, so it's just inherently, right? I, I think, it, and don't you don't have to apologize for it. it. Doesn't make you a bad person. I think it's human nature. Like, what do I got here? I mean, that's why shows like that, like you know, uh, Storage Wars and these auction shows, and uh, you know, uh, the, the Pickers, American Pickers. Those shows are are as popular as they are because people want to know, hey, what's that worth? Or that could be in my grandparents' attic, that same item. And what did they get for it, right? Just human nature. I don't think we need to apologize for it. I, for one, will not be apologizing for wondering what something I either purchased or pulled, uh, what its market value is. Uh, No need to apologize for that. And so... Uh, I was even surprised to the vintage side that the 30%, 40% drops on, on most cards. And, you know, the card everyone looks at as sort of the, the I don't want to say maybe the number one card, but it, it, it's right there. You know, the Jordan rookie and the PSA 8, sort of that that base midline, like what what's the PSA Jordan going for right now? And so a year ago, a PSA Jordan, on the secondary level would cost you $21,000 to buy and own. Today, $9,000. So that is a significant uh, drop uh, over, you know, 50% or more, right? And uh, it's an indicator. These are all indicators, like it or not. And so other key cards, the Griffey Rookie in Baseball, you know, LeBron, other LeBrons in basketball, McDavid cards in hockey, uh, you know, football. You got your um, your Barry Sanders, Peyton rookies, uh, you know, Emmett Smith, uh, you know, your key quarterbacks, which are they're, they're a lot. All these are indicators of where we are in the market. And, and all these indicators are showing 30 to 50 percent uh decreases you know depending on card and that's why that range is is wide so the first question someone might ask me and i get this question uh, i got this question actually you know yesterday before i recorded the show why john do you think this is current uh, occurring well, give me your expert opinion is how it was worded well first of all i don't think there are any experts in the sports card uh industry or market i think there's very experienced people and so i'll use the word experienced over expert and i know you know the e-x-p-e-r and experience kind of plays into the expert but i just don't like you know using the word expert uh, all the time so i'll just say uh, my experience tells me and i've said this already if you if you listen to any of the shows on a regular basis you've heard me say why i think you know, when I probably said it last, I said this is going to be the reason it happens before it happened. And here we are, it's happening, and I'm, st- you know, I'm still going to s- stay steadfast to why I think that is. What's happening in real time in macroeconomics, you know, outside the card industry, obviously, has a direct effect on the card industry. For the same reason the card industry boomed during the pandemic. People home, a lot of free time, people working from home, stimulus packages, stimulus packages to people who were still working. So it was just bonus extra money. People going on unemployment, getting $600 a week surplus bonuses in addition to their unemployment check. All these things together was the perfect storm and the perfect ingredients to people who are in the hobby spending more money uh, in the hobby, right? And then you had the other, when the more money in the hobby, what happens? You get new flippers, uh, day traders, uh, investors, if you want to call them. New people coming in that just see dollar signs and, hey, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to buy this on, on Monday for 50 bucks, and I'm going to sell it on Tuesday for $110 and over double uh, my money. And keep doing this, you know? Then we had... You know, card art really catch fire with Project 2020 from Tops, and then Project 70, which is not faring uh, as well, but still, still doing 
doing okay. So we had all these these factors, new people, celebrities uh, endorsing it. It was cool to be into the sports card world again. Like, so people could come out uh, of the woodwork or could, could hide, you know, uh, stop hiding in the shadows to be a little dramatic. And so all this kind of happened at once, and boom, this thing, like a rocket, shot up. Uh, to the stratosphere well what's going on flash forward right let's go to current times what's going on now and i'm gonna try to keep this as as little political as possible i'm not going to mention people by names but what do we see we see gas prices uh, shooting up again we see uh, conflicts in various parts of the world flaring up that were kind of cooled off before they are now uh, simmering uh, we see border issues, right? Uh, we see a lot of scary things going on uh, in the world. We see, but more importantly, or you know, not on the political level, but industry-wise, hobby-wise, what do we don't have now? Those stimulus packages have stopped. Those unemployment bonuses, the extra unemployment bonuses, have been uh, rescinded. In other words, you can get unemployment, but you, it's the unemployment uh, we knew before the pandemic hit, you know, where you can get only so much a week based on what your, your former salary uh, was. And so things like that have gone back to normal. People have come back to the offices. Uh, I know even where I work, people who were able to work from home, I'm, I wasn't in that uh, category, but other people in my building who were afforded the opportunity to work at home, they have returned uh, to the building, uh, as as report, you know, as told. And so people are going back to work. Got to be, you know, someone watching you. Can't have always ten tabs open and eBay and Copsy and Sport Lots and Star Stock and whoever else, right? Uh, My Slabs. You can't have all those tabs open doing searches and you know uh, transacting uh, as much. You, you now you're under the watchful eye. You don't have that extra stimulus money. Um, you know, uh, things are opening back up again. Uh, movie theaters, restaurants. I've went out uh, to to restaurants more uh, with my spouse since uh, they've they've reopened, and so we're spending money we didn't really spend. You know, and so have other people. Movie theaters have opened. Other entertainment centers, right? Uh, you know, have reopened uh, very under very normal conditions. Hey, if you've gotten the vaccine, you don't have to wear your mask. It's optional, right? You can still wear your mask, but if you had the vaccine, uh, we're not going to make you uh, wear a mask. So, you know, when you're walking around without a, without a mask, you, you f- that normalcy is kicking in again, right? When I went to Dallas three, four weeks ago, very few people wearing masks. I did, I'm, you know, through confession, I walked around uh, without one. I had one um, on me, for, for, that's for sure, but I just, you know, no one else was wearing it. I had my vaccine. Uh, it was sort of, you know, trying to get that normal feeling. And so we're getting there. People are going out and not staying home on weekends. And so all that extra money that was being influxed into the hobby during down times uh, when things were closed and, and we were getting those bonus packages, it isn't there anymore, right? And then you have the uncertainty of what's going on in the political landscape and in other countries, and we see skirmishes and things simmering and posturing and gas prices raising. And, um, you know, uh, things are, 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 people are nervous about what's going on on those on those levels right and so that sports cards sort of taking that middle to back seat again where they all of a sudden were in the front seat uh during the heyday and so we're seeing cards correct get into correct levels now i guess there's two ways to look at that folks you can be upset about it if you if you paid a lot more and now you have to take a loss, and, and hey, that's the risk you take. I'm sorry, I don't really feel bad for you. That's, that's you know, uh, that is what it is, right? For someone like me who, no matter what happens with the card market, 
as long as I'm alive, I'm going to be in the hobby, right? So I just adapt, right? It's a great time to buy right now if you're going to be in this for the long haul, quite frankly. And truthfully, I'd be buying more right now. I'm only not buying for one reason. I said this on one of my previous shows or as a guest on another show. The only reason I've really turned the faucet off to buying right now, it's a perfect time to buy. Quite frankly, I might I might actually cost myself here by not buying. But the only reason I'm not buying right now is the Nationals coming up. I'm just, all, all the stuff I would be buying in online form, you know, on platforms, all those selling platforms, eBay, you know, ComC, MySlabs, all those transactions, all those searches, I've turned that faucet off, right or wrong. It's just a personal decision. And I've just, you know, putting that money away to take, to, quite frankly, to take the Chicago with me, with the with the goal to buy the same cards I would online, but buy them in person. And I, you've heard me say this too. I rather buy a card if 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 price is not any different, if price is not a variable. I would rather buy the card in person than online. It's in your hand. You can see it. The social interaction with the seller as a buyer, and I've been on. I've, I, I'm on both sides of the table at different times as a as a dealer myself. Um, you know, you, you know those transactions I rather have in person. So I mean, going to the national here in about a month, I'm going to be one of the big questions that I want to see is what are the dealers going to do? Are they going to sell at the current comps? Are they going to try to hold out and, and price their stuff higher? just hoping they can get the last remnants, the last sales of the, the tail end of a, a hobby boom, which I, I'm going to tell you that that tail end has uh, has left the station. But, you know, some dealers think like they just hold out for one, you know, more big sales uh, at the last minute type of deal. Are they going to, you know, do what some dealers do, which it's hard to really gauge this unless a, a dealer admits it, but are they going to Hold some cards back. Hey, I, I have these cards. I'm not going to put them in my showcase uh, and sell at the current comps. I, I I got more than that into them. I bought them for more, and I'm just I don't want to take the loss. I'm going to hold them, not sell them, and hope there's some sort of rebound at some point where I can either sell them and, at least for what I paid or or more maybe hopefully depending uh, on the rebound. So. You know, there's, what do you do during this time period? You can complain about it and say that the sky is falling, you know, the chicken little, right? The sky is falling, it's all over, the the world's coming to an end, the hobby's crashing, uh, it's going to be like uh, the 90s again, and uh, where the stuff's not even worth the paper they're printed on. Or you can kind of take my approach and say, man, this is the perfect time to buy some stuff you know at some point is going to rebound and, and go back up. Maybe not to the point, the high points they were during the heyday and the boom. Uh, you got to keep that in mind too. We, they may never get to that stratosphere again. But some things that have come down won't stay down, just in the same effect that it couldn't stay up that long. You know, everything can't go up and to the right. And that, you know, I'm, I'm, you might think I'm crazy here. I don't necessarily think. This correction slash crash is a bad thing. I think it's it's kind of good, you know. If you're maybe if you're not a fan of those people uh, that just came in it real quick to make just saw dollar signs only, and they leave, you're going to be happy. But and I don't have an opinion either way. But we're we're all adults, right? Uh, if you're over eighteen, anyway, to come and go uh, in whatever hobby. Uh, you please. I'm not trying to make anyone leave, but maybe if a little bit of that happens, truth be told, you know, a little truth serum to me, maybe that's not the worst thing uh, in the world. While I'm not advocating that, uh, the hobby's going to survive. One of the one of the things you got to keep in mind is where the hobby was prior to the pandemic. It was strong then. Then the pandemic happened. It went through the stratosphere. Best probably year and a half, two years ever in the history of the hobby. And so now we're seeing that that correction, that, that you know, downward back to sort of levels uh, pre-pandemic. And, and in some cases lower, I get it, and it scares people. 
but I don't think that's terrible. I think it 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 makes the hobby again affordable to some people who frankly got priced out and left for that reason. A lot of people I know, you know, I don't want to say a lot, but a considerable amount who were in the hobby a long time when that when those prices went to the stratosphere, you know, they told me I'm, I'm getting out. I can't even. Number one, I can't go to Walmart or Target and and find the pack. If I go to to get a hobby box. Mm-hmm. The prices are six times the SRP. I'm not paying two hundred dollars for a box of score football, John. I'm 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 think I'm done. This is my sign to leave. And I, I you know I try to talk them off the ledge a little bit when I'm privy to those conversations. Uh, and uh, you know they said no. I'm, I'm you know I'm going to my LCS. I got an appointment tomorrow. I said bring in my stuff. I'm probably gonna you know as long as I get a halfway decent offer. Just I'm gonna sell it and, and get out and not worry about it no more. Can't afford it anyway, and uh, you know, and so it's some of those folks did that. Maybe they come back with the correction. I don't know, but uh, you know, I'm gonna be in it. Speaking from personal, you know, I've been through these before, right? I've been since 1979. We've had a couple of these. These are not new territory. Now I will say. The, the crescendo we've seen has been probably unlike any we've seen before. But this bottoming out, if you will, is not the first time and will not be the last time it happens. And some people will tell you right now, and I don't know where I my answer falls on this. Some people tell you right now, we're not even at the bottom yet. So the price is going to continue uh, to go down. We've seen uh, wax, while wax remains very popular and probably one of the the industry's biggest sellers, uh, quite frankly, the ROI, the, the amounts that some wax is bringing, has come down significantly. It's not red hot in the same uh, respect as it was uh, during the pandemic. So we're seeing a lot of leveling off, cooling off, correction, crash. Again, it's really just mere terminologies. When you look at the numbers, you're looking at 30, 40, 50 percent. Uh, declines in, in in secondary prices and and the terminology really is sort of an afterthought. I think it's just for pundits and experts to fight over, you know, just to to put on a screen crash or correction, you know, and have have two people uh, go at each other's throats about why it's crash or why it's correction. At the end of the day, it don't matter uh, what you call it. It is what it is. I know one of my famous sayings, but kind of apropos uh, for the situation. So uh, we're going to, we're going to wind it down here and just say, listen, if you're going to be in the hobby long term, as someone like myself is, it's not a bad time right now to buy some stuff that you, you maybe you wanted before. And, and when it was in that stratosphere, you couldn't reach it. It was too high, right? You jump up, out of your grasp. Now it's come back down. It's like that balloon, right? Helium's starting to release from it. And it's coming back uh, to gravity, right? And so now maybe it was a, a rookie card, right? Uh, a Walter Payton, or a rookie, uh, you know, high grade Walter Payton that you, you wanted badly, but you couldn't get it because of where it was at on, on the secondary market. Now it's, you know, it's dropped 30, 40% potentially. And you're like, you know what? I can always, I can, uh, you know, I can, I got a shot out to get it and add it and never sell it, right? Once I get it, it's mine. You can't take it away from me. Uh, you know, I can will it to whoever, uh, leave it to whoever, but it's going to, you know, it's going to be mine uh, while I'm here, right? You know, a card like that for me, 48 Leaf. going to start looking again. See what those lower grade ones are now bringing a- after this correction. Is it, in a, is it in a range where I can go to Chicago with that as one of the cards on my list that I'd like to get out of here and bring back to New York with me, right? And maybe it will be. Okay, we'll go see what the market bears. Don't forget, we got four weeks to the national. This, this whatever's going to be is still, obviously, you know, that stuff's always in play. But we got four more, four more weeks of in play before the the Super Bowl, the hobby takes place. So if you're in this hobby uh, for the long haul, it is a great buying opportunity right now. And quite frankly, it might get better if the bottom, if we haven't bottomed out yet. So 
Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the next four weeks leading up to the national, uh, what the market does or continues to do. And at the national, what do what does that secondary market, what do those sellers do? Do you know most people price at comps? Uh, will we see that, or will people say, "Hey, it's a big show. People who are here are bringing you know lots of money. I'm going to try to hold out for the highest dollar uh, and we we can." And so it's going to be interesting. Uh, I think if uh, Saturday and Sunday, if you're there on those two days, especially Sunday, you might see the best uh, deal days, especially on Sunday, as dealers pack up, want to take less back. And depending on how they did during that week, right? Uh, I need to sell some, make some big sit last minute sales here to have a successful show. So there may be some really, really decent deals that last day or two. But with that being said, uh, you know, uh, enjoy the hobby in any form or facet, good times, bad times, and everything in between. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time on Hobby Quick Hits.